from my opinion, in my standpoint, now I'm not a surgeon, I'm gonna preface that, but in my opinion, joint replacements should not really be performed unless you have extreme pain that is not managed by any other means. So somebody has, you know, consistent seven, eight, nine out of 10 pain that is not no longer responding to physical ther uh, therapy, steroid injections, PRP injections, anything like that. Or the joint is so deteriorated that it's at risk for a fracture or you've had fractures in the past and you're at an increased risk for fracture okay. or your range of motion is so limited that you can't get through your normal day-to-day -day activities safely. Because at the end of the day, a lot of, at your age, something that you always have to consider is a fall risk because a, a hip fracture is not a good thing at your age. And so if somebody is not able to properly, you know, step up a curb, then they might, they would be a great candidate for a hip replacement because they're a fall risk because, and it might not even be painful for them. It just might be that they, you know, they just don't have the range of motion because of the changes in the bone. Because right now, whatever it is you've been doing is clearly working and you're pain free. It doesn't, I mean, I haven't done a full workup on you, but it doesn't sound like you're a great replacement candidate in the sense of you don't have a ton of pain. It sounds like you can get through your day-to-day -day life. Yes, there's some fear around certain movements and things like that, and that may be limiting you, but that's that's di a fear-based avoidance of certain activities is different than physically not being able to do something because of a, a bony changes in the hip or something like that. And right. so the way that we would think about this type of case is, okay, you might be bone on bone in your, in your hip joint on imaging, but in my opinion, that's not enough to warrant a replacement. There are tons of people walking around who are absolutely pain-free, who have bone on bone osteoarthritis of either their knee or their hip, and just nobody knows about it because they've never had pain, so they've never had imaging. And those patients don't need replacements. So if, but because you have had pain in the past, we know that there is the potential for pain to come back at some point. And so it is possible that doing some of the interventional orthobiologics or the regenerative injections could be helpful at changing the inflammatory environment that could still be inside the knee joint or the hip joint, sorry, that could be contributing to the progression of the osteoarthritis. If okay. we if we are at end stage osteoarthritis, so uh, grade four or bone on bone, it is less likely that we are going to get true changes in the cartilage, meaning it's not overly common that we'll actually see cartilage regrowth with the therapies. More so what we're doing is similar to kind of what you've been doing is addressing the inflammation that's contributing to pain. And so okay. by addressing some of the inflammation in there, we can hopefully help to improve some range of motion if there is some limitations in range of motion because of pain or uh, prevent pain from coming back. <music>